for probably most of the past 20 years, conventional wisdom has been that uh, world population would probably increase to about the middle of this century and then would plateau, level off and possibly decline. What we're finding is quite different from that in that uh, the population is likely to continue growing right through the end of this century and end up probably quite a bit higher than had been previously anticipated. A lot of previous projections ended up around 9 billion or 8.5 billion compared to the current 7.2 billion that we have in the world, whereas our projection ends up close to uh, 11 billion. 11 billion, that's a big number, isn't it? And a big disparity. How do you account for the difference between what we thought was going to happen and what actually may happen, if you're right? There are really two reasons, one to do with new data and the other to do with new methods. New data that has been acquired over the past maybe five years indicates that fertility rates in Africa, they're declining more slowly than had been anticipated. Why is that? It's hard to know exactly. There are uh, various possible reasons. Most governments support family planning programs, uh, but it seems that a high proportion of women don't have access to family planning. The second reason is that fertility in Africa is high, so it's starting from a high baseline. The population is also young, so that means when fertility remains high or comes down slowly, you project that into the future and you get a lot more people. Is it just Africa or are other countries around the world also slowing their growth more slowly than we had anticipated? It's mostly Africa and mostly sub-Saharan Africa. Asia will probably follow the pattern that had been anticipated for the world as a whole. Asian population is a bit above 4 billion now. It will probably peak somewhere around 5 billion around the middle of the century and then uh, decline. And the other continents, uh, Latin America, North America and Europe, their populations are below a billion and probably will stay there. So if you are right, and we do see this very dramatic departure from what we had anticipated, which is bad enough already, 9 billion is already a lot of human beings, isn't it? What are the implications of what you're predicting? Implications for Africa are challenging. Having rapidly growing population can exacerbate environmental challenges, climate change, health challenges, infectious diseases, high maternal mortality and so on, and also social challenges like poverty. But there is a silver lining, which is that if Africa is successful in uh, reducing fertility, then Africa can reap what's called a, a demographic dividend. And that's a period during which a high proportion of the population is of working age, and this makes it much easier to have economic growth and other kinds of progress. Are we not robbing Peter to pay Paul with that argument, though? Because it's all very well saying, well, we've got lots of young people working, which means that there's plenty of funding to support the elderly, but those young people are going to turn into old people one day. That's right. And the demographic dividend really only can be achieved if fertility declines. Because what happens is uh, you start with a lot of young people, fertility declines, the number of children declines, these children become working age people, and because the population is growing, you've got fewer older people to support. So there is a period, and it's a period that lasts uh, typically a generation, maybe 30 years, when this has turned out to be very good for economic growth. Of course, on the other end, once, that, once that's over, um, the uh, country starts to experience the challenges of an ageing population. And, you know, if you could wave your wand and institute policies right now that would address head-on some of the biggest problems you've identified, what policies would you introduce? Priority and urgency is to address the rapid growth of population in high-fertility countries, particularly in Africa. And we do know what kind of policies are effective. One is making family planning programs and contraception more available. And the second one is girls' education, which has a big effect on fertility because girls who are in education, they're less likely to have children early. They're more likely to be able to access the information they need to control their fertility. Up to the 1990s, population was a top issue on the world's agenda. I think from about 20 years ago, it fell down the agenda in favour of other important issues like climate change, 
the HIV AIDS epidemic. And I think these most recent results show that that may have been premature and that there's a need to put population issues back on the front burner of the world's agenda.